Ready? No, I'm going to open a prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has dominion over life and death, grant us the grace to remember with love and reverence our valiant and honored departed comrades. Grant peace and eternal rest to those who have gone before us. We also pray for our, all our active duty soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines of our country. May they be filled with the courage to face each day, strengthen and console those in sorrow. Every crisis has new heroes. During the 9-11 attacks, they were the first responders running into burning and crumbling buildings as others ran out. Now, during the coronavirus pandemic, the most visible heroes are the healthcare professionals who are saving others and risking their own lives while doing so. These heroes have much in common with the people that we honor today, Americans fallen veterans. They are men and women who have sacrificed their own lives so that others could live. They are both elite and ordinary. They are elite in the sense of character. Giving your life so others could live is the ultimate definition of selfless. They are ordinary in the fact that they represent the diverse fabric of our country. They are rich and poor, black and white, male and female. They come from every ethnicity and background. In short, they looked like any one of us. As we celebrate the selfless and untiring performances of the healthcare workers during this COVID-19 pandemic, it brings to mind the military medics, doctors, and nurses who sacrificed their lives while treating others on the battlefield. Even when the enemy is the invisible virus or the microscopic germ, the sacrifices made are just as meaningful. The U.S. military has already lost service members to COVID-19. This Memorial Day, as we continue to honor those who fell for us in battle, let's also pause to remember those who have also sacrificed their lives while serving others. May God bless them, and may God bless you for remembering them today. Now please welcome Bob Casper from the Merrimack Valley Vietnam Veterans. Okay. Thank you, Regina. Okay, uncover. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has dominion over life and death, grant us the grace to remember with love and reverence our valiant and honored departed comrades. Grant peace and internal rest to those who have gone before us. We also pray for all our active duty, sailors, soldiers, airmen, Marines of our country. May they be filled with the courage to face each day strengthen and console those in sorrow and bestow upon us thy everlasting blessing. Amen. Cover. Now I'd like to welcome Rachel McMillan to sing our national anthem. 
Oh, say can, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you I'd like to mention a little something about Memorial Day. Memorial Day is an American holiday. It's observed on the last Monday in May. It's a day in which Americans honor the men and women who died while serving the United States military. Originally, a day in which flags and flowers were placed on the graves of soldiers and sailors who died in the American Civil War. Now it has become a day in which the dead of all our nations was, all of our dead are remembered the same way. So today, in cities and towns all across the United States, they're holding their own ceremonies at cemeteries and their monuments for the war dead by veterans of military service. In December of 2000, Congress passed a law requiring Americans to pause at 3 p.m. local time to remember and honor the fallen. But this doesn't appear to be common knowledge. But now Memorial Day is not limited to honor only those Americans from the armed forces. It's a day for personal remembrance. Families and individuals honor the memories of their loved ones who have passed on. So today we honor all those who have lost their lives in the times of war. We honor all the police, the firemen who gave their lives in the line of duty. We remember all the first responders and all who have died from the coronavirus. We remember from World War I, over 100,000. From World War II, over 400,000. From the Korean War, over 36,000. From the Vietnam War, over 58,000. From the first Gulf War to Afghanistan, over 2,000. And now with the coronavirus, close to 100,000. Now I'd like to have um, the Chemsford Select Woman, Pat Wojcic, who's going to read our proclamation. Thank you, Bob. And welcome to everyone for this, uh, this truly uh, different uh, Memorial Day celebration. I'm hoping next year we can get back to our usual uh, process. I have two proclamations to read. The first one is a proclamation from the town of Chelmsford in recognition of Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020. Whereas Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020, has been set aside as the annual day of remembrance for those men and women who served our nation during times of conflict as members of the armed forces. And whereas we pause this day to especially remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives to defend the freedom of all Americans, and whereas we honor the service and sacrifice of all veterans of all wars and conflicts, and join the living veterans of the town of Chelmsford in expressing our gratitude to their fallen comrades, now therefore we, the Chelmsford Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim Monday, May 25th, 2020, as Memorial Day 2020, and join all residents of the town in recognizing the deceased veterans of Chelmsford on this solemn day. 
It's signed by the Board of Selectmen and sealed by our town clerk. I also want to read a proclamation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Whereas while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives, celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Rename Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas, throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of, and way of life, and whereas the legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, Charles Baker, Governor of Massachusetts, does hereby proclaim May 25, 2020, to be Memorial Day and urges all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston the first day of May in the year 2020 and of the, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 243rd, signed by, by Charles Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and William Galvin, Secretary of the State of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you, Pat. Now I have to do, I'd like to introduce our state rep, Thomas Golden, to say a few words. Thank you, Bob. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you all very much for inviting me here today. Uh, Regina, as usual, Chumpson does a first class act to make sure we're recognizing all the men and women that came before us. I want to also say thank you very much to uh, Selectman Wo uh, Selectwoman Wojcic and Selectman um, Lefebvre. Lefebvre. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kenny. Uh, I was going to call you just Kenny. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, today, once again, is a beautiful day, but it's a much different day. It's not necessarily different because our hearts are anyplace else, but it's different because we don't have the opportunity to share it with the hundreds of people that Chelmsford normally invites here today. It's not going to make it any different because the people in the town of Chelmsford will stop and remember all the men and women who have given us all of the rights that we at times take for granted. Many of our veterans are here today and I want to say a heartfelt thank you to what you have given all of us. And today, Memorial Day, we remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Those men and women that gave away all of their tomorrows so that we can have our freedoms, so that we can exercise our speech, so that we will have the opportunity day in and day out to say what is on our mind, to speak the way we wish to be heard. That is what we are here today to remember. Because without those men and women who we remember today on this Memorial Day, this country wouldn't be known as the greatest country that this world has ever seen. We remember our family, we remember our friends, and we tip our cap to our veterans. We tip the cap to those men and women who still serve day in and day out to ensure this country is as great as it's ever been. And a special thank you to the men and women of the Chelmsford Police Department who are here with us today. Those people who are on the front line ensuring the safety of all residents throughout the town of Chelmsford. So on this Memorial Day, as in every day, please remember, think, of all the wonderful things that we have, of the country that people try to get to, because their country may be filled with famine, their country may be filled with war. They come here 
because the United States of America provides a beacon of hope, a beacon of light. Opportunity exists here, and opportunity only exists because of the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice, the people that we are here to pay tribute to, to thank, to never forget, and to forever love. Once again, to the town of Chelmsford, Selectman Lefebvre, Selectman Wojcic, uh, Ms. Jackson, thank you for doing a first class first class Memorial Day as always. The only thing we're missing are all of our friends, the hundreds of men and women that take time out of their day to be here. And I know that this COVID-19 is not going to stop the town of Chelmsford from celebrating and thanking and keeping in the hearts those men and women who have died before us that we think of on Memorial Day today. Thank you all very much for being here, and once again, may God bless the United States of America, and may God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce the commander of the Merrimack Valley Vietnam Veterans, Robert Cronin. Thank you, Robert. And I want to thank everybody that are here today. And I want to thank all those people We'll be seeing us on TV. All the thanks have been said, and my, to kind of took the wind out of my speech I was going to make, that I've written down. So I'm going to say something from the heart here. Being a veteran, we have two families. We have our immediate family for Memorial Day. We mourn the past of our mothers, fathers, brothers, friends. This Memorial Day is kind of special to me because it was the 20th anniversary of my son passing away. The second family are those who we served with in the military, are those who died in combat, those who saved our lives in combat, and those who supported us in combat so that we may be alive today. War is a horrible thing. It's something I wouldn't wish on anybody. It always lives with you. In days like today, it all comes back. It never goes away. You'll learn to live with it. I miss them all, and I'll miss them for the rest of my life. And thank you for being here today, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Now we're going to have members of the Merrimack Valley Vietnam Veterans lay our wreaths. The first leaf is going to be laid at the POW MIA stone. Boys. And that wreath is being laid for all the POWs and MIAs and members of the military who didn't make it home. The second wreath will be placed at the, what we call the main stone. And now we're going to have Sergeant Jeff Bernier commanding the Chempsey Police Honor Guard. And they're going to pay our honors to our fallen.
And now, Lieutenant Colonel Sam Poulton is going to say a few words on behalf of the Chempstead Veterans Park. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Especially thank you to our outstanding veterans agent, Regina Jackson, over there. These are extraordinary times. But then again, those to whom we've gathered to honor understood extraordinary times. Whether the Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, where many sons of Abraham had eaten ham for Uncle Sam, all of these men and women, World War II, Korea, my brothers and sisters from the Vietnam conflict, who we could never thank enough because we didn't thank enough. And of course, those brave men and women who are still serving in the global war on terrorism, including the 94th Medical Command and the 804th Medical Brigade, which right now are serving on the front lines, most recently right here in Massachusetts in Tewksbury. Regina mentioned 11 September. So many times our firefighters, our police, and our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have answered their country's call. That's why we have this park, and I just want to say a few words about what it is and what you can do to join us. First of all, we're open. Social distancing, masks, but the park is open. Dawn to dusk, for anyone who wants to come and reflect, there is no charge, and it's totally supported by volunteers. We have a converted mailbox, thanks to, I want to say, Neshoba Vocational Technical High School that painted it red, white, and blue. That converted mailbox is to retire flags. If you want to retire an American flag, come here. We don't ask from whence it came. It will be given full military honors if you put it in our box. And right next to the box is a converted fire department call box. Thank you, firefighters. The call box is to collect donations. It's open all of the time. Looking to the future, and there is a future after the coronavirus. We will be having our Veterans Day celebration on 11 November at 1111, right here, the good Lord willing. And at that time, we'll be dedicating a new stone to those victims of Agent Orange. It'll be placed, help me out, right, it's right back there. And we want to thank everybody involved with that, in, uh, including our own good friend, Mr. Calkins, uh, who engraved the stone and everything else. So the park is here, and it will be here. And just very briefly to close, as those who have spoken before me have said, we are here to commemorate our fallen heroes, those who died in combat, standing between us and those who would do us evil. But everyone, everyone who went into combat for us died a little bit. Some lost their lives right away and some had their lives altered forever. That's why we gather for Memorial Day. That's why Chelmsford is such a special place. That's why this park is such a special place. And as you look around at the names, they're not designated by age, by gender, by national origin, by color, by religion because they didn't ask those questions when they were asked to serve and those questions weren't asked about them. Let's dedicate ourselves today under these extraordinary circumstances to stop asking those questions because in the grand scheme of things, not only does it make no difference it's what unites us and makes us 
the great people that we are. So I invite you to come to the park, read our inscriptions, read the names, and remember that when times are at their worst, we, as Americans, together are at our best. And that's the way we are now. May the Lord who brings peace in heaven, please bring peace and good health to us all. I thank you for coming and salute you all. Thank you, Sam. But before I give the closing prayer, I'd like to give a little thank you to the Chempsey Police Honor Guard, the Merrimack Valley Vietnam veterans, Bob Cronin, Rachel McMillan for singing our national anthem, and she did a tremendous job, Pat Wojcic, Tom Golden, the other town officials, Regina Jackson, uncover please. On this, on this Memorial Day, we pray for those who courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the example of their sacrifice inspire in us the selfish love for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with your strength and peace. We pray to Christ our Lord. Amen. This concludes our service. Thank you.